Right, boy and girls, it's right. Time for story time. <laughs> <laughs> story time. So, uh, we have a problem. No, not a problem. A dilemma. We have Monroe, who is potentially pregnant to two sires. <laughs> Expectations of you I will guide you through the stormiest of seas I'll play hide and seek among the garden trees I have Now, there are many reasons why somebody might want to use two sires It could be a bitch's last pregnancy and you might want to use two sires you can't decide so you can use two sires and then potentially keep the baby from each sire um, sometimes it is done to create genetic diversity uh, you may want to use a dog who has quite a low sperm count but you still want to try and, and use that sire so you could use that boy with a low sperm count and then go over with a different sire um, to make sure that, or to reduce the, the risks of having a single pregnancy or a small litter, because if a bitch was to get pregnant from the dog with a low sperm count, and then there weren't enough live sperm to to fertilize the rest of the eggs, if another boy could do that, then you're reducing the risks of needing to have um, cesarean sections and, and other problems that crop up when it comes to having small litters. So with us, we had Piccolo. Piccolo is a, a puppy that we bred. He is Dom's little brother. We kept him as a stud from our first litter. Um, he lives with a friend of ours because we didn't want to have too many boys at home because sometimes that can cause, cause issues also. So we borrowed Piccolo back. We brought him here. Um, our other male Newfoundland, Dom, was telling us that Monroe was ready. He's quite a good litmus paper. Yes. He knows when the girls are ready. He was telling us that the girls were ready. Um, however, Piccolo wasn't interested. It was the day after that that a friend of ours, she had came to stay. That was already pre-planned. She came with her boy, Sully, who is a lovely boy, fully health tested and would have made a perfect match for Monroe. He was interested, so we allowed Sully and Monroe to mate. They had two meetings, um, one after the other, and then our friend, they left and took their boy home, and then Piccolo decided to get interested. So we didn't want to risk having the timing wrong and because we were so busy entertaining with friends here, uh, we just didn't have time to get to the vets for blood tests and we thought, well, why not just do a dual sire? Because even if the blood the blood testing wasn't correct for the time that she was made with Sully, um, that semen can live for a few days and then get the bitch pregnant when it is time. So what we're gonna do from then is we already have the boy's DNA on file. So we will keep that DNA. When the puppies are born, we will take blood from those puppies. Um, what we do is we just cut the, the nail a little bit short, take a small sample on a card, send that off to the DNA testing lab, and we can figure out who's who the puppies belong to, whether all of the puppies are Piccolo's, all of the puppies are Sully's, or there is indeed a mixed litter where some puppies belong to Piccolo and some puppies belong to Sully. We would quite like to, to keep a puppy from Sully because Sully is a new line to us. We have a lot of Dom, um, Dom's daughters and a granddaughter of Dom's. He runs quite heavy through our line. He's been an absolutely fantastic dog in our breeding program. But with Piccolo being his little brother, it makes sense for us to keep a puppy from Sully if there are indeed puppies from Sully. So the other interesting aspect to this is that Monroe is um, technically brown and Piccolo carries the brown gene. So Piccolo bred to Monroe can produce brown puppies. 
However, Sully does not carry the brown gene, so any puppies that they have will just be black puppies. So if we do indeed have any brown puppies born, we do know that they will be Piccolo's puppies and therefore wouldn't need to DNA test those puppies. Hope that makes sense. So any brown puppies are definitely Piccolo's puppies. Any black puppies are either Piccolo's or Sully's puppies. And obviously all of them are Monroe's puppies <laughs> because she is the dam. Mush. 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 So, because Sully was, it is unproven, and um, still is unproven because we don't know if the puppies are his or not, it made sense to cover Monroe off with Piccolo also because A, Sully is, an unpro is unproven, and B, we don't know exactly when the timing was correct for that pregnancy to take hold. We do have a general idea because we do our own ultrasounds and we can measure the, the fetuses and get an, an estimate on the date. Because the matons were only a couple of days apart and the timing at the moment is showing kind of in the middle of those two, uh, so it is possible um, and probable that the litter that Monroe is about to have in a few weeks now will be a dual side litter. So both boys will be the parents, which is quite exciting. Mm -hmm. It's something many breeders do. Some breeders do this quite often. It's not something we've done. It's something we've wanted to do. So uh, it's it's kind of nice that it's worked out this way. So it gives us something to be a little bit excited about. If something we knew, to look to. yes, something to, to look forward to. It has been a year since we had puppies here. We have bred our girl Tuppence a couple of times this year. Unfortunately, she didn't get pregnant. The last time we did breed her, she did get pregnant. Um, however, she has absorbed the entire litter, which there's, there's several different reasons for that to happen. Um, it obviously upset us very much because our girls come into season together, they usually follow suit. Then when we do breed, we breed several of the bitches together and have our litters together because it's so time consuming and it takes months and of hard work and dedication to raise the litters. We prefer to have our litters together. Basically. Everything runs nice and smoothly because we're in the frame of mind. We have puppies, we're already dealing with owners, getting to know potential owners and find new homes for the puppies. It works out nice to do everything together, clump everything together, rather than having litters throughout the year. So we have Monroe pregnant. Rue is also pregnant. Rue is pregnant with Dom, and we're really excited. This is a litter we've done before. Rue and Dom's previous litters in in Waterworth. <coughs> they're in the ring, and they have just proven themselves to, to be such a good match. Um, we have Bunny, who is their daughter, um, and she's adorable and she's taken what we wanted from each parent mm. when we breed we like to match the dogs so not only do the the health tests line up and the pedigrees line up we breed to improve and we like to improve on the body body structure of our dogs on the movement um, temperament is something that is the hallmark of the breed and, and that is something that you have to keep in mind because you would never want to breed from an aggressive Newfoundland or a Newfoundland that doesn't act like a Newfoundland should act. We want our Newfoundlands to look the way a Newfoundland should look and that's why we um, as preservation breeders look to improve on our lines and our genetics and our health. Bro, let's go. Bro, come on. Come on, boys. Come on, girls. Good girl. So, this is Ru, one of our pregnant girls. I'm going to give her a maternity trim today. So, we do this when they're about halfway through the pregnancy. We'll shave all the tummy so that the teeth are exposed so the puppies can get the milk. We do it now so there's a little bit of time for it to regrow to just to protect the skin from the puppy's nails um, and we also take out a lot of the hair in the back here which as you can see 
everything gets stuck to it. So when it comes to birth, we like to get out quite a lot of that hair just to keep this a lot more hygienic. So we'll go ahead and make a start with the clippers. Go ahead and take this hair in here nice and short. clean up This is Don's daughter, Peekaboo. She is the cheekiest girl in the world. And she always has a smile. She always has cuddles. a smile and a kiss. Yes, she's very cheeky. <laughs> you are very cheeky. Yes, you are. So one of the some some people may ask why we didn't use Dom um, to breed with Monroe this time, and that is because the DNA test that we had done on Monroe was actually incorrect. And Monroe is a cystinaria carrier, mm -hmm. uh, and Dom is also a cystinaria carrier. So they did produce affected puppies, unfortunately, and that's not something that we 
were aware of until after the case or after the fact. And um, their last litter together, we did have a boy who had a tested positive for cystinemia or te tested affected. Um, he is asymptomatic, so he has no symptoms, but we gave him for free to a friend of ours. Um, and she gave him a wonderful home and she happens to also be the owner of Sully who's the boy that we used at Stud um, and we had him here well both of the boys here with our lot uh, when we did them in and it was just so nice to have them here he's so much like his mother he's so much like my mother. he's um he's a little cutie pie and he's cheeky just like his mother <laughs> We really hope that you've enjoyed watching this episode and if you want to come back and see us set up the nursery and indeed have the, pu the puppies that are due here in a couple of weeks, feel free to like and subscribe and follow along the journey.